What's up everybody, Javo Habo is back. I am here to give you the fourth video installment in my How to Be Comfortable When Homeless series. Now I'm going to start by showing you guys some uh, wild edibles that are right in my backyard here. And I'm going to move off to a couple clips from uh, when I was up at the uh, Port Gamble Heritage Park. Now I found a couple good ones, some good berries up there and a few wild edibles, some sorrels and stuff like that. But nothing to really write home about. So I'm out here trying to fill in a couple gaps for you guys just to give you a good general idea of just how much there is to eat out here. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first off, it really doesn't need any introduction you all know it if uh, you don't get a life I'm joking this is blackberry you if you uh, have ever seen it you'll never forget it again you probably maybe you took a tumble into some or you were just walking by and it decided to slice up your leg now this plant Yes, obviously you can eat berries, but the leaves, when new, like this guy here, or this guy, can actually either be eaten raw, or you could boil it into a tea uh, as a mild headache relief. Now just to, just to prove it, see this? Mm. It actually tastes somewhat like blackberry. It dries out your mouth a little bit when you eat it raw. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's better if you just boil it and drink the tea. Really cool aftertaste, though. But something else about the uh, blackberry that a lot of you probably didn't know is you can preserve it. Now, that's easy. You uh, can either choose to preserve the actual berries themselves which means you're going to need a jar or a bag that you can put it in, which well, you need it for the other method too. But uh, it just involves leaving it out in the sun, putting it on a couple of rocks next to your campfire, letting them uh, dry out naturally, that works too. But all you have to do, I have some collected here and I'm about to show you how to make fruit leather. So I'm going to be out here for a little bit. Let me set you guys down here. Got some collected. Not a whole heck of a lot. But you don't need a whole heck of a lot. Especially if you oh, lost one. So, when you got your berries, got them in your bag. You guys will look inside there. Beautiful, delicious blackberries. I'm trying really hard not to just eat a couple right now. There's plenty more, so I can always go get more. But, take that down. And you're going to start doing exactly what your mama always told you not to do. You're going to smash them. Smash them down. That's right. And like I did, you may find that the bag that you thought had no holes in it actually has holes in it. Which is not a problem. Once you have that done, open that up. Now it looks like goop, but it is not goop. Take you guys with me here. Now I'm going to be out here for a little bit. This needs to be out in the sun for about four hours. to really harden up. See? Now that doesn't look very appetizing. But it actually looks like jelly. I'm gonna just smash that down a little bit more with my finger. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get that all together in one little spot. It's already starting to dry a little bit. Yeah, cool. Uh, 
All right. So we're going to leave it just like that to dry a little bit in the sun. Now, you can do that, but it's better. Look at my hands. Mess. It's better to have it on a tarp. Your tent lining, something. Me, I got a little poncho from the dollar store. Worked just fine. Don't forget to weigh down your plastic so it doesn't run away with your... And as I said, I'm just making enough. For one patch. A little bit there. Sorry guys, I walked over to uh, put the bag in the garbage. Now, when you finally have it to this point, you get a little messier, and you're gonna kind of spread it out because it'll dry faster. Mm. It's a delicious mess. But, I'll uh, show you guys uh, this stuff when it's done drying. Once it does dry though, you have something that will last you a good, oh, months. If you keep it dry, like in a really uh, dry place, nice airtight container, that, that can last you a couple of years. It, you're pretty much turning it into jerky. Fruit jerky is delicious. Look, I, I just murdered a bunch of berries, and I did. But, let's move on while that's drying. As you can see, there's no finesse to the stuff I'm showing you. There doesn't really need to be. You don't need a, a fancy dehydrating rack or anything like that. While obviously that is prefer preferable, you don't need it. You can get your hands on some wax paper. It'll work just as well as a plastic bag, maybe a little bit better, because it's easier to peel it off. But, let's move on. So first off, something that immediately jumps out at me is wild spinach. Now, not all the leaves are as triangular as this guy right here, but you can always tell wild spinach because, let's see, it's got a little bit of a white powdery look to it. And the little seed pods and flowers, or right now it's flowering, at the top look just like that, tightly clustered together. I don't know if you guys can actually see that. Here, let's get you guys out of the sun. You must be hot. There we go. It's tightly clustered together there, seed pods. Now this stuff is fantastic, it's just like spinach, you, though you don't want to eat it raw because the wild variety has a white powder on it that keeps uh, moisture off of it, as well as uh, helps uh, repel bugs. When you uh, find wild spinach you'll almost never, almost never, find it with uh, little insect uh, nibble marks all over it like you do with some leaves. But this stuff, you can't eat it raw, you have to boil it or blanch it over fire. By blanching, I just mean you take it by the stem, put it over your fire, a couple good passes until it's completely wilted. Remember, it's just spinach. You're not going to ruin it if you do this. And once you're done, you can eat it. You can eat the stalk, you can eat the stem, uh, the roots edible. The flower heads, before they actually go to flower, are edible. But uh, the best times to get it 
is going to be, oh, let's see, May, June, early July. Right now it's early July, so they're uh, kind of starting to flower up right now. But these are delicious. Now, it is packed full of more vitamins than you'll find in store-bought uh, spinach. And look how fleshy they are. Look at that. It's a good hearty green. Now, as I'm walking, I'm looking for some other contenders for wild edibles. Hmm. My phone just bleeped at me. And actually, what I see is something that takes a little bit more time and effort to collect, but it's very much worth it. It's a common cattail, or a bulrush, if you're up on the, across the pond. Now this is harder to collect because the roots tend to be down a little bit. And this crap loves to grow in hard to get to areas. Just loves it. But I will be back with you guys in a second when I get my knife. I'm going to uh, try to excavate some roots for you and talk to you a little bit about them and the medicinal properties of cattail itself, which you're going to love. Stay tuned. Alright guys, you get to watch me wrestle with this a little bit. See if I can even get to it. work but I'm gonna have to work a little hard to get to the root but you see this goopy stuff right here that looks nasty but this stuff is actually nature's neosporin and uh, it helps your blood to coagulate it stops infection it has very light antibacterial qualities it looks a little bit like snot but this stuff is great. I mean, look at it. And this actually is a pretty good uh, replacement for uh, toothache medicine. Say you got a really bad toothache and you're out of your uh, that uh, dentist stuff, the little cream that comes in a tube. You know what I'm talking about. Ibuprofen just ain't cutting it. This stuff can be uh, uh, used as a uh, tooth remedy. Ignore the purple, that's from the blackberries. Uh, but this stuff is usually clear to uh, light brown. And you can apply it quite safely to small cuts. I have a bit of an abrasion on my ankle here that I got from running around. It's been burning. So I'm actually going to take advantage of this a little bit. There we go. Now it's not the easiest thing to spread, but you only really need a light application of it. Just wipe off the rest of it there, but you don't need. And it's fantastic. Uh, if you wanted, you could uh, store it. Take that jelly and uh, try to collect it. Though it's messy as heck. And all right, I'm going to uh, pause it here. I don't want you guys to see me acting like a complete idiot trying to get this root out. So I'll be back. All right, guys. Found it. Now, the part of this whew, that's edible is this guy right here. Now, this is normally pretty soft. You can't eat it raw. You got to walk. Whew. You do have to wash it first. Well, technically you can eat it raw, but I don't recommend it. It doesn't really taste all that good, but if you boil this, then it'll actually come out uh, as a uh, soup thickener. You can uh, add it to uh, 
any kind of stew you're making or soup if it's a little light it's not chunky it doesn't have the kind of substance that you need uh, this is chock full of carbohydrates um, more starch than a potato or a yam and this stuff is delicious now my favorite way to eat this is over a fire if you uh, roast this you wash it off real quick don't bother uh, peeling it don't try to get to the center of it that's the uh, edible part is the center you roast this over a fire and it's a little difficult to collect but it's only hard for me because the area where uh, my cattail is grown over here is a really thick thick uh, just freaking wetland area it was hard to get to but you can find it uh, growing on the sides of uh, streams or uh, stagnant ponds places like that you know you've seen them growing you know what I'm talking about but this stuff is fantastic it uh, tastes like actually a cross between uh, sweet potato and uh, 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 regular potato when you roast it the you know what it's, you know what it's done when you roast it because the outside will be completely black and the inside will still be white now you want the uh, the center of it you can't eat the fibers in it but if you just chew on the fibers and spit out the strings it's okay if you eat a little bit of them they're not gonna hurt you it's just uh, it'll bind you up real bad if you eat those your body doesn't digest it as well uh, this is a fantastic soup thickener it can uh, be mashed down in a bowl with a rock or something add a little bit of water once you uh, wash it up and peel it uh, separate out the fiber so it's uh, more exposed you can actually mash it up and you'll get something that uh, resembles uh, thin glue it's a paste and uh, you can dry that out just like we're drying out the blackberries right now and you can actually save that turn it into a powder if you want or keep it as a cake and break it off in, in pieces when you're cooking uh, soups or you're uh, making just a quickie little meal and you need something to uh, add some uh, carbohydrates to it so you have a little bit more energy the sugars in this are fantastic for that it's actually relatively sweet if you get it at the right time of year this one I got is a bit of a younger plant uh, it's shorter and it's uh, bleh, I can't English right now because it's freaking hot you guys are lucky I'm doing this now nah, I'm, I'm just kidding I wanted to but anyway that's cattail uh, the local tribes up here actually refer to cattail as a life-giving plant because the leaf it has so many freaking uses um, inside here there's that gooey stuff I told you about that's a natural antiseptic uh, analgesic it uh, is used to uh, treat burns also so uh, you can use it uh, if you burn your hand or your arm or something it can actually help to heal that it's, it's awesome it's, it's just it's nature's neosporin like I said and the leaves themselves actually have a use if you uh, get them when they're no longer alive then they are super tough you can actually uh, use these to make a pretty decent cordage hands are all goopy so look at this this is a dead cattail leaf I just stripped off a piece of twist you'll get a loop like that grab said loop take the top leaf twist away from you reach under grab the other one top leaf twist away from you reach under grab the other one and you continue this until you have the length of cordage that you wanted and in no time at all once you get real fast with it you'll have a very strong piece of rope that looks like something that you'd buy in a store I mean, look at that but 
it's better to get it when the leaf turns brown. Now, you can just collect the green ones and let them die. Works just as well. No difference whatsoever. And you can use this to actually fish with. That's right, you can use this to catch yourself some dinner. This is very strong stuff. Just make sure it's evenly done throughout the whole thing. There's a lot of videos on uh, making cordage. If you guys want to see how I do it, leave a comment below and we'll get to it then. But that's cattail for you, or a uh, wild potato if you want to call it that. Now, up here where I am, we don't have, not, not out here anyway, we don't have really uh, wild onions or anything like that. I'm going to uh, take a walk, or a bike ride rather, down the trail and uh, see if I can't find some wild onion for you guys. Hopefully I can. It's not always, I think it's about the right time of year. It's uh, early July, so it might already be flowering, which will actually make it a little easier to identify. But look at that, stuff strong. I'm gonna just toss it. But while I'm standing here, there's also something else that you guys will love. It's called uh, rose hip. Now this stuff is fantastic. Uh, it's available into about midwinter. Actually, it's still good as long as it's still red and hasn't turned black and uh, raisiny. It's still good. But these usually grow in pretty big amounts. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Rose hip. Look at all those. Rose hip. Rose hip. Rose hip. Rose hip. Need I continue? All right. That about does it for out here at the moment. Now, something I need to say about rose hips. You don't eat the seeds. It's the flesh you want. The flesh of it. Do not eat the seeds. They're covered with just, just evil, choky, coffee crap. You can actually squeeze them out of there. Really, ah, I lost it. Squeeze them out relatively easily. Just open the skin. One second. I'm gonna set you guys down so you can see, which was, you know, the reason I got a tripod in the first place. But once you break it open, you'll have seeds in there that you can just easily just pull right out. Remember, it's the flesh that you want. Now this is an orange one. I got this just to demonstrate. You don't want to eat these ones. Try to get all those hairs out of there. And that flesh is delicious. Now I'm gonna go look for a red one so you, uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about. Game by doesn't like to be recorded, so just letting them know it's recording over here. But you gather that up, that flesh is great. It's very light, sweet. It's not blueberry, it's not blackberry, it's its own taste altogether. Now, if you wanted to, you get enough of these. It takes a little while to process them down, but once they get older and they're actually ripe, there's no yellow or green on it, then you're fine. So I'm going to uh, keep taking a walk down here and see what else I can come across for you guys. And I'll see you in a bit. What's up guys? I found some uh, wood sorrel in here. Now you could tell which one's wood sorrel and which one's clover because the clover is this guy right here. It's got the flower on it. But also, with clover, the leaves are just a freestanding fan like that. However, with the wood sorrel, as you can see, it fans out on top, and it's got that little white V on there. 
Now that is how you identify uh, wood sorrel. It grows among clovers very often. You'll find the densest uh, thickets of it in uh, clover anyway. Now that is a fantastic pot herb. Now, that's something that you can uh, throw into a stew or uh, uh, whatever makeshift uh, soup you're making out in the woods. There's a million of them. I'm sure some of you have probably tried a good uh, couple of them. But it's a good filler. It has a couple uh, good vitamins in it. There's a little, actually a little bit of vitamin C. Most sorrels are very rich in vitamin C. I'm trying to find another one here. If I do, I'll uh, post it. But at the moment, I can't. It's called uh, sheep sorrel. It's shaped like an arrowhead. And it is far better because you can actually eat it along the trail and it'll keep your mouth wet. You don't have to keep drinking your water. But I'll try to look and I'll uh, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, guys, I'm out here walking, trying to find some uh, wood besides pine to use. And I stumbled across a little patch of sheep sorrel. Now, you can always tell sheep sorrel because it looks like a little arrowhead. Now, there's nothing that really looks like it. It's a low-to-the-ground uh, shrub. It grows in relatively big patches. If it's left alone, it'll just pop up in huge carpets. But... What's good about sheep sorrel is it's not only edible, but if you find yourself out there and you want to conserve on water, uh, you're going to be hiking in a little bit to find a good spot to camp. This stuff, mmm, tastes like a lemon. Mmm, mmm. It'll actually make your mouth salivate. And it tastes like kind of a woodsy lemon. It's a it's a delightful bitter. Mm. Kind of like a sour candy, but oh, I'm already I'm already drilling. Oh. What's up, guys? This is wild plantain. Now this is broadleaf plantain. There is a variety that is thinner and longer comes to a point at the end, but the leaf looks about the same as that. And this guy is both edible and it has a medicinal use. You can actually use this to treat minor burns. You can put it on a cut. It actually works very good as a makeshift band-aid. Now, uh, in order to uh, turn this into a bandage, I'm going to show you what you got to do. Alright, take one of the leaves and you crush them up, preferably with cleaner hands. Use a little bit of water and a towel. I don't actually have a cut, so I'm going to be fine. Crush one of the leaves. Hold it on your finger, your arm, whatever. Take another leaf. Put it over. Wrap it around. Grab the stem. Now use that stem to hold it. This is the seed pod stock to the same plant. Now it's awesome because these pop right off and you can use that to actually bind down the leaf itself. Now this isn't going to look pretty, but it's better than getting a very stupidly bad infection because you didn't have a band-aid. Now, do not worry about getting the juices in your mouth because, again, this is edible. But as you can see, that's on there pretty tight. Hmm. Hmm. The seed pod parts actually taste really good. That's not coming off. If you wanted, you can actually use that stock to make a, uh, lashings. Now, I'll show you what I mean here. There's another seed stop stem right there. Pop all this stuff off. It is a weirdly strong st seed stem right here. Watch. All right. Twist away from you till you get a little curve there. 
and you'll uh, end up holding the little bend when, when it coils like that naturally hold it take the top spin it away reach down pull top spin it away from you reach down pull repeat that when you get really good at it you can start doing it pretty quick it's a really good way to test out while the uh, Cordage is out there when you're setting up your tent or your shelter for the night. And I'm not going to do too much, but that's actually really, really strong. Now, I wouldn't use this to uh, catch fish, but you can use this to tie up a couple sticks to make yourself a lean to shelter to get out of the elements for a little while. But before I run out of battery and time, I'm going to find a couple more things here I can show you that are edible. These are salal berries. This is just one of the uh, wild edibles I'm going to be showing you guys. Now, do not ever eat a berry unless you know what it is. Now, this is a salal berry. I've eaten them all my life. If you take a look at the leaves there, the outside is relatively shiny. has a very nice uh, glossy look to it. The veins are closely packed on the bottom, but they're not directly across from each other like you find on, uh, say, a plantain or a blackberry. And the berries grow along the stem instead of in a bundle. Now, they're not ripe until they're black. Now, this whole berry is edible, but there's a pit in the middle of it, a little bit of a pit. Do not eat that. That's a little bit toxic. It's not going to kill you if you get a little bit, but try not to. They just kind of pull right off. But mm. It's always best to uh, wash them first, but I'm hungry. Mm. Mm. That's good. This, guys, is horsetail. Now, horsetail has a couple of uses. First off, it actually uh, works pretty well to polish metals, especially when it's uh, older like this. But the cool part about horsetail is when it's smaller, it's actually very edible. It, it tastes kind of like wild asparagus a little bit, but it's kind of late in the year, late in the summer, I mean. I'm not seeing a whole heck of a lot for horsetail. Trying to find a good small shoot for you guys. I'll, I'll pop it up a little later here. If I find some more, I'll uh, definitely start recording again, but I'm trying to save battery here. Alright guys, so the mosquitoes are bugging you. Which if you choose to camp outside is going to be the situation you're dealing with. And mosquitoes are just horrible, evil little beasts. But if you find yourself next to a pine tree, like this guy here. Take a little handful of the needles. Most any pine will work. They all have a shit ton of sap in them. So you just take it, crush it up a little bit with your fingers, rub the oils on your clothes. That'll actually propel the mosquitoes away. Your sleeves, neck, now, it's not going to be sticky, especially if you get some uh, young, uh, smaller needles like this that are just starting to grow. Then you're not going to be covering yourself in sap. It's just oils, see? Not sticky at all. See? Just fine. But it does wonders for making uh, sure mosquitoes don't just eat you alive. All right. Get some of this on my legs. Yeah. Now I would have found some more, but uh, they kind of trimmed this down to the point where you can't really access the needles, which is good for walking, I guess, but still. But this place is just full of wild edibles, medicinal plants. I don't know enough about the mushrooms, so I'm not even going to play with those. 
I know three relatively common kinds of mushroom that are out here, but uh, not seeing any right off the bat. If I go further in, I'll probably find some uh, good rotten logs that uh, wouldn't have it. But either way, I'm going to continue on now that the mosquitoes are going to leave me alone. Yep, mosquito that was buzzing me is actually staying away from everywhere I rubbed the oils on. So any exposed skin, get on your pants, your shirt. You don't have to put it on your face, but a little bit on your cheeks. All you want on there is the oils. You don't want, need to cover yourself in needles. Back of your neck a little bit. Now these aren't prickly because they're young. They're really soft. But it'll definitely help keep the mosquitoes at bay. Just make sure you get enough on you. If you smell like uh, pine, you're done well. You're good. So I'm going to continue on here now that I'm mosquito proofed. And we'll see what else we can find for you. Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? All right, I found one last wild edible for you. Now, that's going to be uh, Queen Anne's Lace. Now, Queen Anne's Lace, you have to be careful with because it has a very poisonous look like deadly hemlock. Now, hemlock looks like it. But there's a couple ways that you can make sure that what you're getting and what you're eating is just Queen Anne's Lace, which also known as Wild Carrot. Which takes us to the, uh, to the first identifying marker. The root itself is shallow, and yes, it smells just like carrot. You can actually boil this up and put it in a stew if you wanted to. You have to boil it for a little longer than a normal carrot, but it'll smell like carrot. Whereas the root to a deadly uh, poisonous hemlock... Smells like uh, rat piss. Pretty easy. This smells like food. It doesn't. There you go. <sighs> also, see that little purple flower in the center there? Another very strong marker that this is Queen Anne's Lace, not Poison Hemlock. And also, look at the leaves. If they grow along the stalk like this, then what you have is Queen Anne's Lace. The leaves to poisonous hemlock will grow in clusters, look just as fluffy and feather-like like normal carrot, but it, the leaves on the Queen Anne's Lace has uh, tiny hairs on them. The stalk itself is uh, kind of hairy. Let's see here. See? I know I just showed you, but uh, I'm tired, so cut me a little slack. But that's going to do it for the day. If you guys want to see more, want to see me put together a wild salad, just to prove my point, and uh, show you what I'm talking about, that it is easy as hell to make yourself a meal, if uh, all you have is a little bit of meat, say you just got a can of tuna and some bread left, no reason you can't have yourself uh, some uh, steamed wild spinach, with some uh, cut up wild carrot, a little bit of uh, cattail uh, uh, corn on the cob, no reason. So you guys have any suggestions, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, stay smart, stay happy, and as always guys, listen to Jabo.